Hi everyone, and welcome to the first edition of the Holistic Health Hub. I'm joined here uh, with my friends and we're gonna talk about energy. My name is Maggie Chilton. I am a sleep and hormone specialist and also a registered holistic nutritionist. Over to you, Shauna. Hi, Shauna, are you there? Yes, I'm here. We had a bit of a glitch. Hopefully the <laughs> yeah. last glitch of the morning. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, so I'm Dr. Shauna Daru, and I am a naturopathic doctor in Toronto, and I can't wait to talk about energy with all of you. Um, got lots to say. Okay, and Sally. Hi, I'm Sally, and I'm down in Melbourne, Australia, and I'm a holistically fit fitness professional. So, hi there. And Harry. And I'm <laughs> and I'm Harry from Canberra, capital of Australia, and I'm the learning difficulty expert, and I love talking about energy because lots of my clients don't have enough to do what they need. Mm -hmm. True. So how we're going to work it, everybody, is we're going to um, just have like a bit of a free-for-all. We're all going to put in our own little twist on energy, and you guys are just going to enjoy going with the flow. So whoever wants to go first, dive in. Mm -hmm. One of the things I see a lot because I deal with children is mums come in and I ask them, what have you fed your child for breakfast? Mm. And they say, fruit loops or Nutrigrain or something else like that. Mm. And I say, well, look at your child now. They're in, <clears throat> they've got low blood sugar. They've uh, they metabolised this sugar that you've given them and you realise you're in charge of the pantry and really you shouldn't be having that stuff in your pantry need to be feeding them protein and fats and good food, not this rubbish in packets. Mm. So that's something I see every week. And so what did they say, though? What, did, what does you know, the parent do when you say They're that? very receptive. I do them a little picture about blood sugar and show them if you eat something that's reasonable with fats and protein, the sugar will, you know, go on a smoother curve. But if you give them this processed carb, that with the pretty pictures on that is advertised on TV, they'll go like that. The body's going to be working really hard mm. to normalize that and set them up for pre-diabetes if they go on doing it for 20 or 30 years. And it, mm. it's, it seems like, I don't know if you guys agree, it seems like to us that's common knowledge. But that's like, well, yeah. But for most people, they're like, I had no idea. Yeah, but, you know, there's a lot of people, that kids in particular, that skip breakfast. And breakfast mm. is so important. You know, that old saying, breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince and dinner like a pauper. And it's true. You really, it's the most important meal of the day. Well, that's my thoughts anyway. Sean has probably got more on that. But, you know, the energy going off to school, one is eating well and also eating appropriately time-wise, you know, breakfast and snacks and lunch, keeping that blood sugar level throughout the day. I mean, Shawnee, you've probably got more input on that, but I really think breakfast is key. And so, yes, it's the nutritional value, but also bringing it and putting it in place and making sure that you take time out to really have a good brekkie, get your day going. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I definitely agree. And for kids and teenagers, 100% breakfast is essential. But then we've also got the newer trend with intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating uh -huh. where people are delaying their breakfast for longevity, for blood sugar metabolism, for weight mm -hmm. loss and that type of thing. But not everybody can do that and keep yeah. their energy up. So it is something individual. So you know, five years ago, I would have 100% agreed with you that breakfast is the most important meal, but I'm seeing evidence, you know, in research as well as in practice that some people actually do quite well skipping breakfast. Mm -hmm. I'm one of them. That's what I'm finding. <laughs> like my children always, always have breakfast, but yeah. it's sort of either um, oats and quinoa or it's uh, refried potatoes with guacamole, all this kind of stuff. So they're set. But for me, I do not want breakfast. This, it, it just does not factor into my life. I tried to make it for a long time. And I had what the kids were having, thinking that that was a you know, great healthy breakfast, great way to set up the day. It doesn't work for me. And since I've been sick, I've also been doing this intermittent fasting, and it works better for me. Being in perimenopause, I was at that point about a month ago where I was just eating everything that I could get my hands on. It was all, it was all sweet. It was all junk. 
Um, mm. You know, for, from a nutritionist point of view, it was junk anyway, probably not from anybody else's. <laughs> but, and then I got sick and then I realized that I don't actually need that amount of food to survive every day. And the more and more you read about snacking, like if you're an adult, you don't actually need to snack. There should be a gap between, like if you're having breakfast, a gap between breakfast, a gap between lunch, and a gap between dinner so that your body can actually use the stores of food mm. that it actually got from the last meal. Whereas I think we're so used to having snacks, particularly in North America. I don't know if it's, is it an Australian thing? Because it's not a British thing that I, that I remember as a kid. We didn't really have snacks. Yeah, but it's cool. They, they all have it, you know. Really? Don't you have it for recess and whatever? Yeah. Yeah, so, maybe, I don't know why we didn't at school. I don't remember it at all. Um, but snacking doesn't allow your body to use up what it has. It just mm-hmm. keeps going. So mm-hmm. I, I, at the moment, I'm definitely on the intermittent fasting train because it's working for me. But so it's kind of like emptying out the tank. You're letting it get down mm. to the bottom so that you can refuel it. I mean, that makes sense. But, you know, how does that work with your metabolism, though, Sean? And like letting it completely empty out and does it dip it down? It blood sugar and stuff? Well, it mm. depends. So actually, the research says that it's better for your blood sugar if your meals are healthier. Like if you're mm. eating well, so lots of, yep. you know, vegetables, protein, healthy fats, it's actually better for reversing insulin resistance and prediabetes. But mm-hmm. there's some exceptions. If your thyroid is low, you mm-hmm. can't do that. Or mm-hmm. if your adrenal glands, your stress organs are depleted or exhausted, mm-hmm. you absolutely can't do that because one of the, I'm gonna get all technical here, one of the roles of cortisol, your stress hormones, is to keep your blood sugar level between meals. So if it's depleted as mine is, <laughs> you mm-hmm. can't skip meals and you need to snack. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know. Personally, I eat regularly and snack a lot and I pile up the breakfast. I actually eat breakfast twice (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, and a late lunch and a really light dinner. So more like Sally was talking about. But when I'm working with patients and clients, we have to match it to the individual. Not everyone's me. And your frame is so much more slight than mine. Mm -hmm. So you doing an intermittent fasting is not the same as me doing intermittent fasting. I have more to lose <laughs> at this point in time. I have more to lose than you do. So, yeah. you know, that's also a, a different thing. And, and I think your point, Shauna, everybody's body is different. And I think the key thing here is to get to know your body and understand your body and listen to it and work with it. And so when we're talking energy, for example, yeah, you know, everybody, there's so much information overload and trends come and go. And so like the fasting is in or the juice diet or whatever. And mm. I come across that all the time with my clients. They go, oh, I'm doing this 5-2 or I'm doing this and that. And they haven't actually stopped to look at their own selves, at their own bodies and listen to what works with their bodies, particularly doing the bodybuilding. You know, some work really well on high fats, high protein, whereas some others are going, you know, high carb really, really works for their body type and their age and where they're at. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's a really important thing is to get in tune with yourself, with your own body and get to know yourself. So we're talking about energy and like with the fasting, how many people really know if their adrenals are really depleted or fatigued? That They may have been running in overdrive for such a long time. It's just become normal state to be in. And I find that often with my clients. I walk in the door and they want this, this and that, but they actually have to stop and assess themselves. And I think that's something that we need more people to do because I know it's a work in progress, but, you know, the adrenals and the thyroid are, are really big issues and so many people have problems with them but aren't aware of it. You know, so, you know, what do you do? Do you get blood tests? Is that how you find out about your... Usually your, it's a liver test. Is it? Yeah. You know, that's, that's the part of it. Yeah, part of it, mate. There's one really good test. Like if somebody drops something or slams it on, you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, right. Oh, you potentially have adrenal fatigue. Because it should yeah. be like, oh, what, you know, what was that? Not like nails up on the, on the ceiling. That's, you know, sort of like a little insight into if you had adrenal issues. Mm-hmm. And the other one would be being um, really exhausted the day after a hard workout. So right. when your adrenals are depleted, you can't <laughs> handle a high intensity or a high duration workout or a really yep. long work day. So the, like the, the crash at the other side and the recovery is yep. going to be pretty slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Did, were you putting your hand up to say that happens to you, Sally? 
Yeah, but I know that. So I have to work with it. I have to listen to my body. But sometimes, you see, my stress outlet is exercise and I've had to hone it back a lot. But sometimes the stress is so high that I just have to really go hard and let it out, knowing full well that the next day it's going to knock me around a bit. But, you know, it's, you know, nobody's perfect. I'm definitely not perfect. But I, I have to find what works for me and try to taper it back. So you know, what, what about kids, Harry? Like how did they, I mean, we all have children, but from your perspective, how does it show up in kids mm-hmm. in your clinic? Stress is a major factor. Mm. Stress, um, lack of sleep, but mm. stress, yeah. stress at home, stress at school, just saps energy massively. Mm. And so, you know, for adults that have control of their life, managing those stresses out is really important surfacing what those stresses are getting getting a recognition that this is something i'm not coping with i've either got to build up capacity or i've got to reduce the impact mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's a big thing particularly if you you're addicted to it or you, it's it's a familiar pattern yeah so um they're, they're big things but sleep you know that there's lots and lots of people who just have no idea about how to sleep. I mean, one of the battles I have, and we talked about this last week, Sally, is this thing about what you put in your bedroom. Mm. I don't put in your bedroom. Do we have screens in the bedroom and how many and are they all on all night and why? Mm. We talked about this. Yeah, we talked about this in our podcast the other day, Shauna, that the number one thing that I find, bar none, maybe even 100% that people do is they take their phone in as their alarm clock. Mm -hmm. and it just blows my mind that we have become that addictive that it can't even leave the side of our heads while we're sleeping and half the time they're not putting it on airline mode so it's transmitting Mm. and receiving the whole night and what does that do to their brain Mm. we don't know yet exactly the jury is mm -hmm. out yeah yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're only going to know years down the line when unfortunately by then it's just too late damage has been done I so when talk, we, I'm sorry. I have talks every day with parents about the green issue in bedrooms. It's a really current topic. They're mm-hmm. highly addicted. Mm-hmm. Because they're mm-hmm. green serotonin. Yeah. People make lots of money out of it, but very destructive potentially. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, children's mm-hmm. childhoods, I, again, I was talking about this with Sean the other day, seems to be so different from when we grew up. Like not even different, like night and day. I was, you know, I, I, we didn't have anything. I mean, we're all around the same age. Yes, you are, Harry. Um, <laughs> we didn't have, like, we had a black and white TV, you know, where, that you got up and you turned the channel. Yeah. It was yeah. nothing. Whereas yeah. now it seems they have everything. And I, mm-hmm. even though I yearn for those times with my children, I also think, well, this is the world they're growing up in. Mm. It's, that's kind of a, kind of a struggle. Mm. Well, as a professor of pharmacology at Oxford called Susan Greenfield, and um, mm. her concern is about the ability of the children's brains to adapt fast enough to this rapid change, because mm. there's no doubt impact on screens changes the brain. That's been documented. Uh, yeah. Are we adapting fast enough? No one knows. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very interesting, and I'm sure we'll be kicking ourselves in a few years by allowing this to happen in whatever capacity, but yeah. Mm. So getting back onto the energy. So under the umbrella of energy, you know, we've got sleep, we've got hormones, we've got exercise, we've got nutrition. What else is there? I mean, energy is the number one thing affecting all of us is, would it be, you know, stress, fatigue, that sort of thing? Is that what we're talking about with the energy? Well, engagement, love, connection is Mm -hmm. a big thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that human energy that we all rely on for, for sustaining us. Like mm. what we're getting with the four of us now, we're getting some energy from it. Because yeah. we can feel all the vibrations of the other three. Yeah. yeah, and you can, you know, although we live in completely different parts of the world and the country, we can all look at each other and see expressions and... You know, it's not like it's an electronic email that keeps going backwards and forwards that can get misconstrued and people get the, you know, get the wrong end of the stick and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. 
So, I mean, it's like we were talking about before with the empty tank, letting it empty out. This one's like filling up your self-love tank, filling up your, your heart tank, your soul tank, and, um, you know, looking after yourself first mm-hmm. and getting that connection, reconnection with yourself and what's important and, and nurturing yourself. You know, that's really important for your energy as well, building that up. Mm. Yeah, and it's known to schedule that in, I think. Yeah, exactly. Making that a priority in your day, absolutely. Mm -hmm. How do you do that, Harry? Do you have times, because you guys are all in clinic too, so, and Sally, your gym is your clinic, Mm -hmm. but how do you, Harry, how do you schedule in your self-care, self-love time? Um, it's very important at the beginning of the day I get quiet and then in the middle of the day I go out for a walk mm-hmm. and we'll, I'll go out and have a few jokes with the staff. We'll have fun together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I also have fun with my clients. I've, you know, it's been a, a revelation to discover a, a work that, where I can just be myself. So half the time I'm with my clients, it's just fun. You know, I just become a kid again. Which is mm-hmm. not different. And that's, <laughs> you know, I get the energy from the kids. Mm. Kids bring enormous energy. If you have kids in your life, they, they really enliven the environment. So, like for me, when my kids left home, it was the hardest thing I ever had to cope with. Mm. Just all this energy. Then you have mm-hmm. to generate it yourself. Kids bring energy, they bring life and love. Mm. Yeah, except when they're on their iPads. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like they're, all, they're also really draining as well. You know, it's it's that that balance, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. One of my mum said the other day that um, you know we were having an argument about how much time this boy should have on his iPad while he's doing a program with me, and I'm saying 45 minutes, and then we, <clears throat> we compromised to an hour if he didn't do it every day. And then his mother commented, well, when you're on your iPad, you're actually not happy when you come off it. And when you're off the iPad, you're much happier. I found exactly the same thing with my two boys. When I say, okay, time's up, they're like, mm, 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 like they're just so grumpy. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. why are you on it if this is how you are when you come off it? Mm. Yeah. So I know, I know exactly what she's talking about. Mm. Mm. Yeah, for me, the the biggest thing for my self-care is walking. So I Mm. love walking and I build my routine and my day around making sure that I have at least an hour outside a day. Mm. Um, And living in a big city, that's a bit of a challenge in a way, but at the same time, it's just how I get around. And um, that's probably my biggest one. My life is really packed right now and uh, I can always count on the walk to work to get grounded and get ideas and get connected again. Um, and that and fueling properly. So back to food again. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. What about you, Sally? Oh, yeah, walking. I mean, I have to exercise every day. It's just part of my outlet and whatever. But walking and stretching and breathing and reconnecting in every day it keeps me grounded and balanced it puts everything back into perspective and you know everything that we practice with the gratitude i do all of that when i'm walking and processing it and do some little meditations and just let all the stress go and then yeah reconnect it's it's, if i don't do it i'm a mess just because with life going on and you know getting pulled every other way with work and kids and whatever um, the walking just gets me back to that space of like, let all the other stuff go, just reconnects me, you know, getting back into the ground, pounding it through, moving, getting the heart going. It's awesome. Awesome. I think it's the number one thing because everybody can do it. You know, my big thing is there's no such word as can't, you know, there's always something that we can do and as simple as walking and breathing and stretching, you know, stretching gets everything moving throughout the body and, you know, everything's a whole so the diet the exercise but the self-care that self-management self-connection that's really 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 important to keep us ticking along and to to deal with the energy that it comes at us every day you know with the stress and the fatigue or whatever it is with the whatever it is that hits us if we can get ourselves more balanced and and manage our own energy then we can deal with the energy that comes at us mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's, it's more difficult walking here 
in North oh, America. Oh, yeah. Not so much in the city, but <laughs> where I live, yeah. Yeah, well, with all that snow you've had, that was yeah. ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. That, that was, was my thing in the summer. I would go for yeah. an hour walk and I would listen yeah. to an audio book or whatever it is. But yeah. it's, been, yeah, it's been a little challenging lately. <laughs> yeah. So no, no pants and snow boots. I know you do that every day, Shauna. But to me, it's like... It's not real fun. <laughs> <laughs> nope. well, what's, what's your self-care, Maggie? What did you say? Like, um... oh, it, go, it, it goes up and down, I have to say. And it's never consistent. Yeah. But for me, it's sleep. Yeah. Like, sleep is my big thing now. Yep. You know, recovering from, from being sick. But being, being um, going to sleep. But I'd also listen. Like, I love to learn. Listening to audiobooks is my number one thing that I love to do. Mm. So if, if, if I'm driving, I'm listening to an audio book or if I, if I can get outside and it's not, it, it, you know, the snow's going now, but I'll listen to an audio book. Um, the only bad thing about audio books, I always find I want to make notes. So then I can't listen to that audio book because I'm walking because I can't make notes when I'm walking. So then I can listen to a different <laughs> audio book. I love, <laughs> I love books. Love books. But you know, going off a little bit of a tangent, baffles me how my boys do not like books i i'm always reading and mm. they say that they mimic you no yeah <laughs> no, no books are getting read here unless i'm reading it to them <laughs> so somebody can come up with a you know a great way maybe harry a great way harry to potter. pardon harry well, potter that's what we're that's what i'm reading to the youngest yeah. um so he's nine um Maxwell is uh, almost 11, so he's 10 at the moment, but has no interest in books whatsoever. And I'm just like, how can this be? You, my child, look at all the books that we have here. Mm-hmm. Well, any, any you know, tips on how to get them to read books? Greatly appreciated. <laughs> well, at school, they were saying, even if it's comics, just find something that they align with mm-hmm. and then let them go from there. You know, we can't throw the classics down their throat if they're not receptive to it so at least a comic they're reading it you know i i struggled with that one at first and then i thought oh yeah and now my youngest reads he loves reading and i I say half an hour before you go to bed and he does it like whoa Mm. yeah so you just have to have that hey it's magical oh no it's awesome it's awesome it's awesome Mm. have you tried graphic novels they're like comic books turned into novels it's the new genre yeah yeah, we have had those, um, but the, the, we, they sort of tend to read them, or my oldest tend to read them quite quickly. So then you're like, eh. but I, I'm, I'm, I'm confident it will come. I have <laughs> to believe that it will come. Have you got into the, sorry, the Treehouse series? Are fantastic. Have you come across those, Harry? I think it's Andy Griffiths, and they oh, have. Yes. It oh, the Treehouse stories are fantastic. Just. They start off with 13 story treehouse, then goes mm. to 26. And they, there's a whole series of them. Kids are just drawn in. They absolutely love it. Yeah. The treehouse mm-hmm. series. Look it up. I'll okay. send you some Australian books, Maggie. Ooh. I'll send you some of them. Yes. Kevin. Irreverent. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, they're just, you know, lots of toilet humour and stuff that kids love. Yeah, oh, awesome. yeah. No, that's <laughs> great. Love <laughs> things like that. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but it is funny though when when we when we're talking about energy, and then I was talking about my self care. Actually, books do give me energy when I when I really think about it because it spurs me on to want to investigate more and then talk about it in my Facebook groups, etc. That's how I do my learning most of the time is through books. So that's mm-hmm. what actually gives me energy. I never thought about it that way, but mm-hmm. now I know. Mm-hmm. Well, when you say that, you know, Harry was mentioning about getting energy from his clients i'm the same i love communicating with people and chatting with people and and understanding them more and that just yeah. builds me right up absolutely every day so i'm blessed mm-hmm. i'm really blessed that i i have a career that i'm passionate about and working with amazing people i am blessed because it does boost me up every day it doesn't matter what's going on at home i go to work and i come home feeling fantastic mm-hmm. yeah. very blessed yeah, do you have that, how do you feel shauna with your clients do they energize you yeah, same thing. Um, the only thing that drains it is if I don't build enough breaks in the day. So yeah. it's, um, it's not the clients that drain me. I, um, I learned 
a long time ago. So I'm naturally pretty introverted, which you can probably tell. Um, and um, <laughs> my energy comes up. I think up. you need to give that up now because it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let I go. keep proving it to myself. <laughs> Anyways, so my energy comes up with, with connection with people. And um, I'm a much happier, you know, much more fulfilled person with that daily connection. So meeting with people one-on-one -on -one every day is like, it really does fuel me as well. And mm. the other thing I was thinking about is that, you know, I've been through a couple of pretty big burnouts in my life and getting my life back on alignment has been the number one thing, like beyond mm. any like self-care practice, exercise, eating that has picked the energy up again. And mm. even to the degree that, you know, my lab results would change you know, my tests for my hormones would, would shift from like being really low to being actually quite normal when I got my energy going in what I would call in alignment with where, where I need to be in my life. And sometimes that's just a matter of looking at, you know, how you spend the hours in your day and what of those hours actually make you feel good and what of those hours you don't feel you get drained with. Um, mm. So getting back onto that because then it's like energy is moving through you instead of your rising and raising the energy to get things done. So that's mm. really been a biggie for me. And I do like to, you know, check in with how I spend the hours in the day with what's like feeding me and what's draining me um, and mm. trying to throw some of those things away. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, just being aware of it, really stopping and assessing and having a look at yourself and, and working that out. I'm going to start doing that. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm. And I think so many of the mothers that I see don't give themselves permission to look at that. Mm. Mm. They're just totally engulfed so with to looking after the others around them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to wrap things up, guys. So one last takeaway from everybody. Let's start with Harry. Feed yourself well, rest yourself well, and be happy. Do what makes you happy. <laughs> nice. Sally? I just everything in balance, you know, balance and moderation. I live by the 80 20 rule, but you know, balance is key and listen to your body. Absolutely get in tune with yourself, reconnecting with yourself, and be guided by that. Hmm. And Shauna? <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to come right back to that alignment again. Take a look at what's going on in your day, what's giving you energy, what's taking energy, and trying to get, try to line up more with what's feeding you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Get outside, get fresh air get that energy because they say that if you exercise or move, it gives you more energy mm -hmm. instead of just sitting there trying to get some energy. Mm. All right. Make sure you guys like this um, YouTube channel, subscribe and share it with your friends. We'll be back next week. Great to see you. Beautiful. And don't forget to subscribe to the um, Holistic Health Hub. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, Sean.